Welcome everybody to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. And we're talking about healing. I remember, Greg, there was a, <clears throat> excuse me. My father in the faith, Oral Roberts, had laid hands on over two million people because that's, that's, he had a physical manifestation in his right hand. And he wouldn't even go to the meeting until that manifested. And he was so protective of it that in the evenings before a meeting, he, when they, they would go, to go down for the evening meal, he wouldn't sit with Evelyn. She'd sit at a different table. He didn't want the temptation to, to talk to her. He's listening, listening, all the time listening. Well, someone said, uh, then he had to do surgery on those arms, the shoulders. He'd laid hands on so many people. They had to do surgeries right in the top here. And he, he, he sat up on the platform and he reached down for them like this instead of going in a line and so forth because that's the way the Lord told him to do it. And then someone said to me, I just don't understand. And they wouldn't uh, being you know, hostile about it. Just, well, they didn't understand. I don't understand. All that healing power flowing through his arms, yet he had to have surgery. And it rose, it just came out on the inside of me. Healing is not a reward. Mm -hmm. It is a property. Mm -hmm. It belongs to you. He was ministering it to someone else. Eventually, he had a serious attack of appendicitis and it, he, he was in the hospital and the doctor and Richard were standing behind a shield and they had x-ray on him. And he was, he was laying there on that, on that gurney he, and he just said this to the Lord. He said, I've had the last surgery I'm gonna have. I'm not having any more surgery. That's it. And he claimed it out of the last chapter of the book of Philippians. Mm -hmm. and he said, you meet my needs according to your riches and glory. And I am receiving and, and I am cashing some receipts here. <laughs> <laughs> now see, he received his healing while they were watching it mm. on the x-ray machine the doctor said to Richard, Did you, do you see what I'm seeing? He said, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Can you see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. He was ministering that. He, he broke his shoulders down obeying God. And the surgeons fixed it. He didn't have trouble with them. Well, some, they weren't as strong as they had been. But anyway, he just decided that's the end of that. Never did have any more surgery. Amen. So it is a property, it belongs to us because Jesus bought and paid for it. Now then, let's go here to the last chapter of the book of Mark beginning with the ninth verse. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week and appeared to Mary Magdalene out of whom he cast seven devils, she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen, they believed not. Now that's what I want you to see. Total unbelief. He didn't, they didn't believe it. And then, uh, they went and told it to the residue and they didn't believe it either. Afterward, he appeared unto the 11 as they sat at meat and upbraided them. Hmm. He upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, you go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be condemned. That's plain enough, isn't it? And these signs, these signatures shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it'll not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, what does he mean about baptism? Well, Matthew recorded that. And he said, all authority has been given unto me both in heaven and earth. All of it, all power. So that doesn't leave any for the devil. Mm -mm. No, no. <laughs> and his name has taken his place here. So now let's go over to the first covenant. Mm, mm, mm. And I have this highlighted and I have red underlines and a red block around it. <laughs> Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the... He said, Now look, God. <laughs> Behold. When I come unto the children of Israel, what shall... And say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they say to me, What is his name? Well, they want to know his name. Mm -hmm. Where's the authority? In the name. Now we know we have the name. But look at this. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God said moreover to Moses, he just kept on talking. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac and God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. This is what you this is what you tell those that are in the flesh. Has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. Now you tell us what that actually says in the Hebrew. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I will be what I will be. That's what just got all over me. I didn't know that until he straightened me out. I will be what I will be. If I need to be a cloud, I'll be a cloud. If I need to be fire, I'll be fire. If I need to be manna, I'll be manna. So? Look, look before we go, chapter four, verse one, Moses answered and said, here we go, but behold, they will not believe me. So he's already anticipating them, them not believing. And I love verse two right here. And the Lord said to him, so what do I do if they don't believe me? I said, what's in your hand? Well, I got this stick. I, I'll be what I need to be. I'll use the stick. Yeah, he would say it. to us, what's in your hand? Now go to Peter, silver or gold have I none, but such as I have. He gave him what he had. Yes, he did. And what was it? In the name of Jesus. <laughs> he went right back to the name. Yes. Praise God. All right, we were going somewhere. Well, no, wait a minute. Let's get it. You, you, you opened that up. Let's yes, see sir. what happened to it. <laughs> he said, cast it on the ground. <clears throat> he cast it on the ground. It became a serpent. Moses fled from it. The Lord said unto Moses, put forth your hand and take it by the tail. I don't know whether I want to do that or not. He's already done. They're not going to believe me. I know. Get that snake by the tail. It became a rock. But now he put forth his hand and caught it. That took faith. Mm -hmm. And it became a rod in his hand. Wow. The name. Mm -hmm. Now, just slip right on over to Exodus 15. 26. If you will diligently, diligently hearken or listen to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight, 
will give ear to his commandment. When we give ear to the, the commandment of love and walk in that, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I've brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Now, well, I see there, now God will make you sick. Now, he used it as a weapon. Mm -hmm. He used it as a weapon. What did he do? Don't you remember that the destroyer went through? All of those plagues represented the gods of Egypt. Mm -hmm. So he was showing the one true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is greater than the gods of Egypt. For 430 years, all they've known is the gods of Egypt. Yeah. And somebody would talk about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to him sometimes. All he had to do was just lift his hand. They had been pretty well protected because his people were there in the first place. But all he had to do is just lift his hand and all of those diseases of Egypt just went rampant. But none of them got sick. No. And that's what he, he's referring to that. That's correct. Now that's our base. And it goes all the way through. The rest of the world can participate in COVID. I don't have to. Amen. No, sir. Amen. Or anything else. I tested negative five times. <laughs> and uh, I'm not bragging on me. No. I'll no. show you where, well, look at the 23rd chapter. Now, start at the 20th verse. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place where I've prepared. Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not. He will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Mm. That explains this 25th verse. And people have, well, and, you shall serve the Lord your God. He, your angel, shall bless your bread and water. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast your love long, young or be bare, or you don't have any miscarriages in the land. And the number of your days, I will, I will, I will fulfill it. Well, now, why, how, why will the angels, I always ask questions, why will the angel bless my bread and water but not take sickness from me? Because he can't. He can't. He doesn't have the authority to do that. He didn't have the authority to, to go there in the first place until no. God sent him. Right. I will take I'll sickness. I'll do that. I'll take care of that. He'll do that. that in, in, he'll do that me. in Jesus. I'm telling you, I kept looking at that and meditating on that. And, I t and it got big in me, and of course I'd preached it, you know, for years and all that. I left the house, and I was driving out down the driveway, and I stopped my car, and I shouted at the top of my, I mean, I, I, I just yelled it out. Glory be to God, I will never be, he's taken sickness from the midst of me. I will never be sick another day in my life hereafter forever. Amen. And I haven't been. Amen. I will not. Now, January 2019, Minister's Conference. I've told you this before, but it fits here. All the flu symptoms came on me. I was sitting there in the front row. Mm -hmm. I started chilling. Uh, and I said, you can't put that on me. <laughs> you know you can't put that on me. In the name of Jesus, take your hands off my body. You can't do it. You can't do it. And 15 minutes later, it was gone. gone. And the Lord helped me 
tested negative for COVID five times. And our staff, we tested going into Lagos, Nigeria, tested negative coming out, tested negative going into Bogota, Colombia, tested negative coming out. Not just me. Mm -hmm. I mean, a whole bunch of us. When it first broke, we did a special on, on the network, on television, and you laid hands on every single person of the crew. Yes, I did. And do you realize, there, I, I was thinking about it real, realizing this later, that entire crew continued to work with news and everything else and kept going. The entire time, continued to keep going. Matter of fact, I got tested once and they said, well, you have the antibodies. I said, I never knew I had it. Well, you have the antibodies, which means you had it. No. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, but you know, I don't, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. we just kept going. And I truly believe it was because they all received what you did mm -hmm. that night mm -hmm. when you laid hands and anointed every one of us with oil. And that crew kept working, and they're working today, recording this. Yes, amen. But all of this, so we truly, I will take we service. had a real mask on. Yeah, we did. Mm. Yeah, now, we did. John G. Lake in a bubonic plague. Yeah, you told that that night. And the British, <clears throat> uh, People were just dying, just falling out, dying. Mm -hmm. And um, John Lake and his, and his crew were the only ones, they offered $1,000 a day to anybody that would come help. Well, they wouldn't even get close to this thing. And uh, they said, the scientists said, why, why is it you don't die with this? Well, they were right there among people that had it. And so he said, take, take some of that th froth and put it under your microscope. They did. Teeming with that bacteria and virus. He said, now put some in my hand. They did. And it was dead. He said, the power of the living God Amen. resides in me. And he said, that's the reason we don't get sick with this. Now, so many people panic when the first symptom happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they give up. You didn't do that no. that day at minister's conference. Mm. That symptom hit you. You didn't panic. And, oh, my, what just happened? Where did I miss it? Oh, no, not me. Not me. You didn't do any of that. Mm -mm. that and because of this. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. This but was my base. I will take sickness from the midst of the, I will do this. I often wondered why people got healed before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, before he shed his blood. There's two examples in particular. Jesus often told people, your faith made you whole. Yes. And in a study, and I can't see where they even realized they had faith. One of them was the lady that once had an issue of blood. That's the way I say it. Mm -hmm. Not the, mm -hmm. She don't have no issue of blood. The lady that once had an issue of blood. Um, he said to her, daughter, your faith made you whole. The other one is in Mark 10, a guy named Bartimaeus, mm -hmm. blind Bartimaeus. Um, she said when, when she'd heard of Jesus, same thing with him. When he heard it was Jesus passing by, he called out. So I realized their faith was in Jesus on the one, I will take your sickness. They're looking ahead to the time when the Messiah will take their sickness and he won't put any of the diseases on Egypt. He is the I am. Yes. And so by faith, they're looking at what's coming and their faith is on him. Jesus even told the Syrophoenician woman, the healing's not for you, this is the children's bread. <clears throat> and she persisted with him because mm -hmm. she didn't have a covenant. And there was one thing that was common among them. Bartimaeus, mm -hmm. Bartimaeus shouted, son of David, son, now, he, he's a Jew. He's one speaking English. Son of David, son of David, 
Do Hesed for me. That's it. Boy, that's covenant talk. And Jesus stopped. He's talking covenant. She did the same thing. Right. Right. She said the same thing, even though she came from a barbaric. Uh, She's not in background. covenant. She called on covenant in the faith. Yes, she did. She called him son of David. That's why. Do Hesed for me. That's why he answered her. Covenant's only the children's bread. She's that's, not there yes. yet. He wasn't calling her bad names. He wasn't trying to be ugly to her. But she wouldn't quit. She wouldn't quit. (laughs) No, she wouldn't quit at all. And she wasn't touchy. When he heard it was Jesus. What's interesting, earlier in that same chapter, in Mark chapter 10, there's a rich young ruler that leaves sad because his faith is in what what he had done, so Jesus gave him something else to do. Oh, there's something else about Bartimaeus. He was legally blind. Mm Mm-hmm. He had a garment. Where is that here in the 10th chapter of Mark? Mark chapter 10. Oh, I've got it right here. Mark uh, 10, 46. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me, do hesed for me. And many charged him to hold his peace. But he cried to me, he just got louder. <laughs> you son of David have, do Hesed from a boy. When he said Hesed, son of David, and Hes, David was big on Hesed. Yes, he was. He when Jonathan it. was killed, he said, he, he just, he was so burdened. He said, is there anyone left to whom I can show Hesed? Yeah, I have a covenant partner and he's dead. They said, yeah, there's one. Mephibosheth. Get him up here. He crippled. He said, go get him now. He'll sit at my table. And he did. Glory to God. Well, now, and now, but now notice. Look what it comes to do. Jesus stood still. Verse 49. Yes, and verse 50, casting away his garment. That beggar's coat. The priest would examine you. You remember the lepers? Go show yourself to the priest. The priest would examine, and you're, you are legally blind. You actually can't see. So you wore this garment. Mm-hmm. I, I can just see him. <laughs> he saw his faith. I like what Gloria said. He, he said, Bartimaeus, what can I do for you? <laughs> he said, and this is huge. Mm-hmm. Lord, that I might receive my sight. He had to say it. Mm-hmm. If, now, what if he had said, Lord, I've learned to live with this blindness, but I sit in these cramped positions and I can't see and my back is so bad and I have so much pain that I can't sleep and oh, would, oh, would use your power and heal my back. That's what would have happened. That's it. He said, he would have set the conditions. Jesus said unto him, verse 52, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole and immediately received his sight. I don't think you picked the coat back up. No, no way. Carol, we out of time? Should have known. (laughs) We'll be back here in a moment. (laughs) Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Do you truly believe God can heal you? When the enemy comes from all angles to scare you into believing that you can't be delivered, overcome fear, defeat doubt, and build your faith with the Word of God. In the Healing is Yours package, you'll learn the truth of God's Word that will renew your mind and build your faith for your healing. Hear what God has to say about your healing in Healing Scriptures, a CD by Kenneth Copeland that reinforces with Scripture that God wants you well. You Are Healed, a mini book also by Kenneth Copeland, explains God's covenant of healing for you. Every word from Jesus brought deliverance and healing. Bring that Word of God into your household and charge up your faith to be made whole again in every area of your life. God's will is to heal, 
and He will heal everyone who comes to Him in faith. Because of your position in God as His child and as joint heir with Jesus, healing belongs to you. Allow God's healing power to overtake you. Be sure to request your free Healing is Yours package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Know beyond all doubt that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Go to kcm.org slash tvspecial or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you are outside the United States, shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. Prepare for your future in life and in ministry at Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Apply yourself practically to ministry through class electives designed to develop your gifts. Get equipped for your calling, enter into your mission field confidently, and teach others to do the same. Graduate as an available voice to carry the legacy of faith into your life and ministry. To find out more, go to kcbiblecollege.org. Apply today. The preciousness, the sweetness of Jesus. God had to deal harshly with Israel because he, he, he's protecting them until he could get his only son in here and his sinless blood remitted your and my sins and provided healing and divine health for us all. Isn't that wonderful? Well, hey, don't miss tomorrow. Yeah, I know you won't. Praise God. We'll be, we'll be here with some more things about you not only receiving your healing, but ministering it. So until then, this is Kenneth Copeland, Greg Stevens, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 of our staff and class. We're a multitude. Amen. <laughs> Little tiny multitude. Amen. But God loves you. And we love you. And Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Amen. Praise God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org or request it on DVD or CD. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.